I don't think, you know, if you're just working on one thing, what's the guy doing that, that he's not part of that thing, right? Yeah. So I think just mixing as much of the game in uh, on a consistent basis would be the way that I would do it. For sure. I have a that. So <clears throat> Jimmy Perkins and Sandy Camber are two of our players that coach for our club team. I like what they did this past summer when we were monitoring some of their practices. What, what grade did they have? They were like the fifth. Or is it fifth grade? So just above that age, right, right around there. You can do it at any age, honestly. Um, and we're kind of doing it at Utah right now is, right, we'll, we'll teach something for five to eight minutes, right? So we taught our invert offense. Coach Gittemann taught his invert defense today on two different sides of the field, right? Then you can compete against each other. Right, so you go offense first defense for five to eight minutes, and then you can break up again. Right, teach and reinforce what you liked and what you didn't like, and then you can either move on or you can go again against the defense. Right, where uh, at that age, if things are going really well, right, you keep staying positive with them and say, hey, let's just keep doing what we're doing. It's working. And if the defense changes or they do better the second round, right, you can say, hey, it's not always going to go our way, but We'll learn from this. So I think to teach both sides, that's always a good idea if you're going to segment into six on six offenses to teach for a couple minutes, come together, split, teach for a couple minutes, come back together again for two segments, uh, and that will be enough for them mentally yeah. um, for one day. How do you um, transition from drill to drill like, effectively or fast? And run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, typically what happens is we'll, we'll, we'll after the drill, we'll upload the we'll whistle and, and tell them to go get a drink and they get two minutes. So sometimes it's one, most of the time it's two. Um, and then we have a tradition at Utah's that right after they're done that, they, they get right back on the sideline and they're lined up in their position groups and defense and they do attack. And one of the things that has become part of our program is we, we we, we don't want our guys looking at the head. Like, it's just what's next. So we, they get back up on the line, and they're ready. They'll run. They're ready to go out and play lacrosse. They don't, they don't, they're not thinking about the drill. We don't have our practice plan, so they don't know what the next you know, thing is. So we'll blow the whistle, go to the sideline, get two minutes, get one minute. Captains, if you want to talk, you can talk. Once they're done, they're back up on the line again, and then we move on to the next drill. So it's, but it's quick. Don't, don't go there yet. Just, just keep asking some questions. All right. No, it's all right. <clears throat> yes. So <clears throat> when you get a bunch of kids together, maybe some have played, maybe some haven't, how do you decide for, what are some tips that you guys look for for a guy that might be a defensive kid or an offensive kid or a midfielder kid? <clears throat> what are some of the traits that you guys look for to decide where they should be best fit on the field? How old? Set sixth? Fifth and sixth? Yeah. This, uh, so Too young? Yeah, you want my opinion? <laughs> but yeah. I, I think they all should be playing everywhere. I, I, I think, I think, you know, let some kids play attack and switch them around. You go play midfield, you go play defense. I don't give a shit if you want to play goalie or not. You play goalie, put your ass in there. And <laughs> How do you deal with the mothers when that happens? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that's, I think that's part of the problem. I think that's not, that's not part of the problem. It's just, it's things that you shouldn't have to deal with. Right? And, and, you know, what we want to teach, we want to teach a, 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 nobody knows, like, you know, and here's what happens, you know, you get a sixth grader and he's, he's a foot taller than everybody else and he runs faster and, and he becomes a midfielder. And, and just because he can run faster, his stick skills are, are probably not being taught as well. And he doesn't know anything else about any other part of the game except running from there to there. And so what are we doing for that kid? We're not, we're not helping him develop. We're not putting him in spots where he's uncomfortable. We're just making his life easier and he becomes the star and he doesn't progress. And you know, I, I don't, and, and, and he's not learning how to be a great teammate. He doesn't know what it's like to have to like maybe play a position that he's not really good at and, and develop some other skill sets to overcome you know, that weakness. Maybe he's a great straight line runner, and then we put him on defense, and, but his lateral movement, and he's backpedal, and his hip, not good. Well, 
that should be a clue, all right? If you want to become a better lacrosse player, these things are you going to have to work on. And I think selling the parents is, look, you know, there's a lot more to this game than that kid running from point A to point B and, and jam the ball in the back of the net. And what I'm going to try to do is help them develop a higher level skill set that may be able to increase his ability to play the game at a little bit of a different pace and a different level. Yeah. Maybe you guys need a female on your cooking staff. <laughs> I'm just saying that I have not had a single problem with parents. Not a single one. I don't either, because I don't pay any attention to them. <laughs> 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 they don't tell me what to do, yeah. they don't do anything. Yeah. I think most people are afraid of women. And everybody plays everywhere, by the way. Yeah. There's no ticking. Oh. I think the parent thing, for me, it's always been just laying the ground rules down. You know, I've, I've really, I haven't had a lot of, and I've, I've, coached, I've coached club teams and rec teams and, you know, I haven't had a lot of problems with the parents because I've brought them in and, and I've explained to them clearly what the mission of what we're trying to do is and, and giving them clear guidelines of what's going to be acceptable and what's not acceptable. And, you know, I think... And you guys have all probably done the same thing and still had problems. Like today is different than it was 20 years ago. Um, you know, 20 years ago was different than it was 50 years ago. Um, but I still think communication and clear, clear vision of what's going to happen and transpire in this program, and then you've got to hold yourself accountable to stay to that. Um, but that's a whole different ball of wax. To answer your question, I would have these kids playing all over the place. Uh, and I know that's not a suit to Jordan these days, but for the betterment of the kids and the growth of the game, I think it's vital that they, that they do that. Through what age is that? You, that's a really good question. I don't know. These guys could probably, I, I, I would do it, like sixth grade, I think, is, is like probably the, the level. I think once they get into middle school or high, like junior high, seventh grade, and, you know, I, I still think most of those kids haven't really figured it out yet. Um, you know, clearly by high school, you know, you're going to kind of have to move into certain spots, but sixth or seventh grade, maybe? I don't know. I mean, I think, I think you got that. But like between seventh and eighth, they're like being a defender or like an offensive player, but I mean, I played midfield, I played a little bit of goalie too. Mm -hmm. Like sixth, seventh, eighth grade, went into high school as a midfielder, ninth grade, tenth grade. Completely switch positions, played attack, attack. Tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. Freshman year of college, play attack. Sophomore year of college, midfield. Junior year of college, back to attack. Senior year of college, attack. First year in the pros, midfield. Second year in the pros, attack. And I kind of played attack ever since. But I think as a, as a as an offensive <laughs> player, <laughs> one day, I <laughs> one day. I just think, yeah. I mean, Having you, you cr creating that type of mindset with a kid, I always thought, and he helped me with this, it just makes you more valuable as a player. If you can do both, you add more value to your team, right? If, I, if I'm only an attackman and that's all I know, right, am I more valuable there? Or if, if I can take a couple shifts shit up at midfield, I can run back and, and play defense for a shift or two. You know, I just think kind of cultivating that mindset of, but the way I say it is, be a cross player first and then play whatever position you play second. Because again, there's you know, this is a guy that's been studying, you know, fifty to seventy five of the greatest lacrosse games that have ever been played. And things don't go according to your practice plan in those big moments. You need an attackman to be able to run back on defense and to be able to like play some transition defense for five or six seconds to save your, your team from getting scored on. So just and I think Mark made a good point there. You know, what what it's going to make you more valuable to your team. You know, what, what's going to make you more valuable to your team? You know, to be able to play more than one position. Um, I think that sometimes we lose sight of that. You know, the, the, the parents might be much more valuable to my son, but at the end of the day, we we might have to use this kid in two or three different positions to really help our team get a little bit better, and he's capable of doing it. And the other piece, and I want to go back to that, this is something, I, and again, I, you're never too young to learn this as far as I'm concerned, is, is 
put yourself in a position of where you're weak. Find out where those weaknesses are because that's what you're going to get exposed. If, you, if, you, if you're capable of going on playing college lacrosse or whatever, that's what's going to happen. People are going to, they find your weaknesses and then they expose what your weaknesses are. So if you can get kids to acknowledge that I don't have a, an ability in this area and it's okay, it's okay. I mean, shit, that's, that's the beauty of life is finding out where things aren't right and then now, how do I compensate or try to fix that? And, and that's going to develop him as a human being at a completely different level. And then as an athlete, it will really put him in a spot, I think, that now he'll start looking at things differently. Like, he'll want the challenge instead of shying away from it because I'm not good enough to do that, right? So that's a mindset. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, that can be culture third, fourth, second grade. Is, is, is rewarding those kids that want to put themselves out there and challenge themselves to be different and take on challenges that are uncomfortable. That's uh, so probably the, one of the greatest things that we teach our kids on a daily basis is life sucks and it's a bitch and it's going to come at you and if you're not prepared to deal with it and the only way you're prepared to deal with it is dive right into it and, and, and put yourself in spots where you're really, really, really uncomfortable. And, and test yourself. And it isn't all roses. You're going to feel at times where you want to cry, right, and back off. And, and our guys do. And, and, but they learn from it, and they're going to get better. But I know this is getting way outside. <laughs> I think it goes back to the diversity in sports experience, too, the specialization. Right? We talk about the greatest, probably the greatest wealth of a kid that we're looking for is lacrosse IQ. And there's just so many kids out there that are just playing one position that they don't understand anything else that's going on in the field. And when you, you know, when you get to our level, that's what we're looking for—a kid that knows everything that's going on. And how can you do that better than having played play defense? And then all of a sudden, you're an attackman, and you know exactly what sucks to do when you're a defenseman, or when if you could play a little bit of goalie, now you're shooting. Well, I know that off hip sucks to try and get to, right? Um, and that's that to me is probably the greatest way to develop kids across IQ. They see the whole field. They see they know what's going on. They've been in every position. Um, and similar to playing all types of different sports, you're never going to be able to have a fourth and one on goal line if you never played football and know what that feels like. You never know what it feels like to block a shot. If you haven't played hockey, right? You have to line up in between the shooter and the goal. And, and, and have the, and not only know what it feels like, have the physical wherewithal to know what, how to do it, right? Like, the, and, and, you know, so, you know, multiple sports, it's something that we're harping on now because there's too many kids who specialize. Yeah. I just need to make one more point. Yeah. If you do not put the least athletic kid in the goal, <laughs> Seriously, Stereotype. you want your team to be good? Yeah. Have one of your former tackle play goal or a midfield. My progression, I played I played midfield and goalie all the way until I was in ninth grade. Played midfield half the game. I think that's one of the, my biggest pet peeves about lacrosse, especially in the other level. I agree. Adam and I are both very athletic, well, I used to be athletic, um, <laughs> and, and still aren't, and uh, I agree, just put the guy in there and can't do anything else. Best goalies that you'll see are the ones that have the best sticks, and that's even all catching. That's a huge point and a great point, so speak of that a little further, because we have kind of a start with the philosophy of, sorry, you're playing goalie, it's your turn, because it's hard to get him, so yeah. if you have any yeah. thoughts on how to make it more appealing to them, but we bundle them up in you know shin pads or whatever else to get them in the box. Or, because I'm a huge having the athleticism in there is the difference. But getting them in there is a hard thing to do. So it's about um, the best recruiting you're going to have to do because I was pulled off a soccer field and I was the soccer goalie, and the coach knew that I could see a ball and I wasn't afraid to get in front of it, and he he pulled me out to the lacrosse field. You know. Oh, interesting. Uh, but same thing, I was shoulder pads, elbow pads, uh, catcher's pads on my, on my legs. Then I sort of like far skunked 
you know, like as I, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I didn't, and I didn't start. My first drill was salt and pepper. It was, I was in the goal, my coach was right here, and it was just a soft toss, right? With a, with a pinky ball, with one of those girls across balls. Right? So you have to just sort of break down their, their fear level, and you have to, like coach was talking about, you have to applaud them yes. as the superhero. Yes. You know, and that's going to develop their confidence because they are the last line of defense, right? And then as they sort of get more comfortable getting hit with the ball, staying in front of the ball, you'll see them sort of start to shed the equipment because now they favor the mobility over the fear and needing the protection. And you're getting a tougher, sort of more courageous player. And especially when you're in those games where it's a one-go game and he makes that save and 12 of his best friends are jumping on top of him after he makes a save. That's, a, that's all you really need. Yeah, had, had them up, man. I, I, I find it absurd that we put these little kids in these goals and we're playing with these the, those balls and, the, and they're getting just rocked. No wonder I lost them. Shit. I had two different experiences. I had salt and pepper, and then I had David Lausdat who played at Cornell in 76. Stole. Exactly. I didn't love shots right in my shoes. get out of there quick enough. Oh, I was <laughs> Those are my worst moves. The question you had this summer. I think yeah, somebody had a question. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was just sitting there thinking about the multi-sport thing. You guys are building the summit program. How do you handle that when you're starting to build a comp program? And kids that want to be multi-sport athletes. Oh, we're I mean, we're, we've told those guys right from the get-go. Like, we, when your sport is... In your time, we want you playing your sport. You're not gonna, we're not gonna penalize you. We're not gonna look at you wrong. We're not gonna criticize you. Know, play your sport, right? Play your sport. And, and I just, yeah, I think we're doing a good job of it. I don't, I don't monitor that 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 much, but we we it's been part of our program from day one. Where we don't want you giving something else up just because you think you need to be with us 24 7. Yeah, because a lot of sports have become more specialized. I mean, yeah. you bring up hockey and it, there's just, it, I don't know, there's just this fascination with specialization and thinking that if I go out and I just play this one sport, I'm going to be the best player. It, 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 it doesn't correlate. It doesn't correlate with them. You know, there's, there's one, you know, child prodigy, right? And everybody thinks, oh, well, shit, I just read this book. And, you know, Pete Sampras, since the time he's been seven years old, has been hitting tennis balls for, well, there's one friggin' Pete Sampras, right? There's a gazillion other people that have tried that that aren't anywhere close to Pete Sampras. So we, we just have this tendency to rush to, to this, this highest level and think, all right, 10,000 hours, I, I'll, 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 I'll be Beethoven. Well, shit, I tried to play the piano, like, a zillion times, I can't get past like the first three or four keys, and finally figured out, you know what? I ain't ever gonna play the piano. So, I'm just going to something else. <laughs> so uh, I just, I think it's, it's important to balance for the kids, right? And it, it, just on that note, I'll tell you a quick story. All right, so we, we were uh, we were recruiting in uh, when I was in North Carolina, and this is back when we were recruiting kids that should not have been recruited. And, this kid was in eighth grade, and, and he was going he, he would go into his freshman year. And he was actually on campus for a visit, which I'm embarrassed to say that, and th the fact that we had to take this kid around on a visit in eighth grade. And he was a very good lacrosse player. Finishing up the visit, uh, I brought him back to the office, and I sat with his mom and dad, and I didn't like the kid from the get-go. I thought he was an arrogant little shit. And, and he was in eighth grade. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, you don't belong here, right? Do you, do you have any idea of the history of North Carolina across the kids that have played here? I'm thinking about my son and how hard they work and all this stuff. And, and the kid was just arrogant. The mom was arrogant too. And, and we get back into the office and we sit down across from each other. So I said to the kid, I got one last question for you. I said, do you play any other sports? And he's like, nah, just like that. And I said, well, why not? And the mom's like, and she jumps right in. She goes, no, he, he's really good at lacrosse. I said, I, I knew he was good at lacrosse. I, did, I asked him, did you play that? And I said, you know, I think you should try. And I was like, well, why, why does he have to do that? He's going to play lacrosse in college. I said, you know, 
sitting on the end of the bench and getting a little humility is a good thing. And I think that's something you might want to think about.